Sandy Jardin Davidson was born on May 28th, 1972 in Saltcoats, North Ayrshire, Scotland, to parents Philip and Margaret Davidson. Soon afterwards, in 1973, Sandy became a big brother to a sister named Donna. On the sunny spring morning of April 23rd, 1976, just one month shy of Sandy's fourth birthday, Sandy and Donna were dropped off by their parents at their grandmother Mary Bunce's house on St Kilda's Bank in Burtree Hill, Irvine, just yards away from the family home. After saying goodbye to their children, Philip and Margaret both headed to their respective workplaces. Blue-eyed Sandy was playing with his two-year-old sister in his grandmother's back garden, whilst their grandmother was inside, but nearby. Sandy was a very energetic and curious child, however, sometimes this got him into scrapes. The family Afghan hound called Kissy had managed to escape through a garden gate which had been opened. Perhaps the gate had been opened by a stranger, therefore the dog chased after them, but on the other hand, perhaps it became unlocked by a simple gust of wind. Sandy, who was affectionately nicknamed Sheepskin by his father because of his substantial amount of blonde curls on his head, subsequently chased after the dog, motioning for his sister to come with him, but she refused and went back into the house. Their Afghan hound soon returned to the home, but unfortunately, young Sandy was nowhere to be seen. The police were immediately alerted and extensive searches began, including excavating local rivers and ponds, but despite their best efforts, no trace was found of the three-year-old boy. Philip and Margaret sat down with two-year-old Donna, who was the last person to see Sandy, and asked her what happened. What she said to her parents was chilling. A bad man took him away. Donna kept repeating this, but she couldn't give more details. Her memories of the incident have become more and more vague into adulthood, but it's important to reiterate that she was only two years old when her brother vanished. At the time, the Burtree Hill estate where Sandy's grandmother lived was a building site, with foundations being laid for new homes. Construction halted on the site as police looked for Sandy, however, they turned up nothing. At the time, it was suggested that Sandy had maybe fallen into a ditch or had gotten into a tragic accident, possibly following his dog into a nearby river, where he subsequently drowned. However, there is no evidence to support such theories. His parents, Margaret and Philip, began to fear the worst, their fears seemingly confirmed by a neighbour who was working in his garden at the time. The neighbour told police that he saw a child who resembled Sandy leaving in a car with a strange man, but the child did not seem distressed in any way, so he thought nothing more of it. According to one source, Sandy, who was a fan of cars, had previously gotten into the back of a neighbour's van and stayed hidden in the back until the driver realised Sandy was there and brought him four miles back home. Perhaps this had happened again. Lots of rumours circulated in Ayrshire regarding what happened to Sandy, but it was all unfounded gossip. 
Blame was passed to local travellers, and some even speculated that Philip Davidson had disposed of Sandy because he wasn't his biological son. All of these rumours were just that, rumours, but they were incredibly hurtful to the family, who were already suffering enough not knowing what happened to Sandy. Over the years, various appeals have been made and numerous pieces of information have been passed to police. Despite numerous new witnesses coming forward over the years, the Davidson family have never been told anything concrete about what happened to Sandy, which has haunted them for decades. In September of 2014, Broomlands Primary School, which was constructed around the time Sandy disappeared, was demolished, and despite the family pleading to authorities to excavate the site, the police and the council refused. This was a devastating blow. Interestingly, a new witness came forward the following year in 2015. The witness claimed that he was abducted and violently abused by a teenage girl from the same neighbourhood at around the same time. This witness, who can't be named for legal reasons, just lived a few streets away from Sandy's grandmother's house. The man had allegedly been playing on a rope swing by a nearby river, along with some other children, before heading home, when the teenage girl ambushed him and dragged him into the bushes, where she hit him on the head with a rock and assaulted him. The witness is quoted as saying, I must have passed out because I'd been missing for a while, about an hour or so, and the locals were out looking for me. The next thing I remember was seeing policemen everywhere, and I was being taken to the hospital. The man who compared this girl to an animal, as well as the infamous Mary Bell, believes that this incident took place in the summer of 1976, following Sandy's disappearance in April the same year, or possibly the following summer. Therefore, he believed that the same girl may have been involved in Sandy's disappearance. The witness claimed to have repressed the incident until a violent situation that occurred at his workplace triggered these memories to resurface. The man initially told a police force in England who passed the information over the border to Scotland. Unfortunately, Ayrshire police dismissed his claims as unreliable. Due to the heavy strains of the case, Philip and Margaret Davidson's marriage broke down and the pair divorced. However, they have never lost hope that someday Sandy will be found. Speaking to the Irvin Times in 2016, Sandy's younger sister Donna, who has campaigned for years to try and find out the truth about her older brother, stated... My mum believes he is alive somewhere, and someone took him in, and has been bringing him up as their own. I would like to think that too, but something inside me just thinks that Sandy was abducted, and something sinister happened to him. I don't believe he is still alive, but either way, we just need to know. Donna has been receiving counselling sessions with the help of UK charity Missing People after suffering nightmares and flashbacks from the day her brother vanished. She wants to be able to move on in her life without carrying feelings of guilt. According to various news articles published in 2020, Donna was contacted by a woman on social media who claimed that her father took Sandy in his car and told her that they were going to help him look for his missing dog, the car then driving into a field. Police Scotland were somewhat sceptical of the story and quickly dismissed it, citing that the female in question suffered from mental health issues. 
Donna believes that Police Scotland should have taken these claims more seriously and just because the woman had mental health issues didn't mean she was lying. On the 45th anniversary of Sandy's disappearance on April 23rd, 2021, Donna uploaded a video on social media appealing once again to the public for assistance. In the video, Donna retraced her brother's last known steps up to the moment he vanished. She is desperate to find out the truth about what happened to him. She carries guilt with her every day, wondering if she could have done something to protect him. All Donna and the Davidson family want are answers, so that the family can find that long-awaited closure they so desperately need. Police Scotland states that Sandy's case remains open. There have been many theories put forward over the years about what happened to the toddler, including a link to the world's end killer, Angus Sinclair. However, Police Scotland are still trying to find a positive line of inquiry. Despite Sandy's case being the longest running missing child case in Scotland to date, it is not known whether he wandered off and perhaps suffered a tragic accident or whether he was abducted and met a more sinister fate. If you know anything regarding the disappearance of Sandy Davidson, you can contact Police Scotland on their non-emergency line on 101 or call or text Missing People UK on 116 000.